Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how I got in here. Oh, thank goodness you're here. I've been calling you. Pardon? Something terrible has happened. Eddie's been in a car accident, and you have to go on for him. Good heavens, how awful. <coughs> Who's Eddie? Eddie. Edwin. You have to go on for him. On for him? You play the part. Now, I know you haven't rehearsed it exactly, but presumably you know your lines, and I mean, you've certainly seen it enough. I don't understand. Do I know you? <laughs> George, we don't have time for this kind of joshing. Half hour. Well, my name isn't George. It's... Well, I don't know what it is, but it isn't George. <laughs> my God, did you hear what happened to Eddie? Yes, I did. It's just too awful. Now, good luck tonight, darling. We're all counting on you. Of course, you're a little young for the part. And you are shorter than Eddie, but we'll just cut all the lines about you bumping your head on the ceiling. Oh, and remember, when I cough three times, that's your cue to unzip the back of my dress. Then I'll slap you. We changed it from last night. Wait, what play are we doing? What? What is the play? Coward. Pardon? Coward? It's the coward, no coward. <laughs> oh gosh, George, don't do that. For a second I thought you were serious. Now break a leg tonight, darling. Coward. I wonder if it's private live. At least I've seen that one. I don't remember rehearsing it exactly. And am I an actor? I thought I was an accountant. Why does everyone keep calling me George? Oh, hiya, Stanley. Good luck tonight. We're counting on you. I heard about Eddie. What play are we doing? Very funny, Stanley. No, really, I've forgotten. Checkmate. Checkmate? By Samuel Beckett. The one in the trash can. Stanley, you're always playing jokes like this. Just don't do it on stage tonight, okay? Uh, good luck. I mean, break a leg. Did you hear Eddie broke both legs? <laughs> George, get in the costume. We have 15 minutes. You're not Eddie. Who are you? Well, I don't know, really. George, I think. Maybe Stanley, but probably George. I think I'm an accountant. <laughs> okay, well, look, no one's allowed backstage before a performance, so you have to leave, or I'll be forced to report you to a stage manager. She already knows I'm here. Oh, well, if Meg knows you're here, I guess it's fine. It's not my affair. I'm late enough already. Oh dear, I better just go home. Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. George, stop that! Seriously, if you keep this up, we'll bring up the charges. Go to the dressing room to change. But where is the dressing room? George, you're not amusing. It's that way, and give me those. I'll go soak them for you. Please don't soak them. Please don't soak them in my job. Now go to the dressing room. You have five minutes. Five minutes, everyone! Five minutes! Places! Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? At this evening's performance, the role of Elliot, normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Belden. The role of Amanda, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Dillon. The role of Kitty the Barmaid will be played by Miss Patrick Campbell. Dr. Strickland will play himself. The management wishes to remind the audience that the taking of photographs is strictly forbidden by law and is dangerous as it may disorient the actors. Thank you. What? Extraordinary how potent cheap music is. Yes, that's true. Am I supposed to be Hamlet? <laughs> Whose yacht do you think that is? Where? The Duke of Westminster, I presume. It always is. Ah, well, perhaps 
to be or not to be. <laughs> I don't know anymore of it. I've never met her. <laughs> oh, Elliot, you're so amusing. You're married to Sybil. Tell me about her. Well, not much to tell, really. She's sort of nondescript, I'd say. Uh, uh, well, I bet you were just about to tell me that she's just like Lady Bundle, and that she has several chins, one blue eye, one brown eye, and a third eye in the center of her forehead. Weren't you? Yes, I think so. Victor's like that, too. And I bet you were just about to tell me that you traveled around the world. Yes, I was. I traveled around the world. And how was it? <laughs> the world? Yes. Oh, very nice. I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? Not really. I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? I guess it did. <laughs> <laughs> I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? Uh, hard to say. What brand biscuit box? I always feared the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? Did it? I wonder whose yacht is out there. Did it? Did it? My this stage looks dusty. I think I'll just clean it up a little. Not only did the Taj Mahal look like a biscuit box, but the women should be struck regularly like gongs. <laughs> Yes, quite extraordinary. And how was China? China? You traveled around the world. How was China? Well, I liked it, but I felt homesick. How was China? Uh, lots of rice. The women bind their feet. How was China? I hated it. I missed Sybil. How was China? I missed the maid. Oh, maid! How was China? Just a moment, please. Oh, maid! Oh, good, there you are. I think you missed the spot over here. <laughs> How was China? Very large, China. And Japan? Very small, Japan. And Ireland? Very green. And Iceland. Very white. And Italy. Very Neapolitan. And Copenhagen. Very cosmopolitan. And Florida. Very condominium. And Port Lamboy. Very mobile homo, I don't know. And Sybil. What? Do you love Sybil? Who's Sybil? <laughs> Your wife, who you married after you and I got our divorce. You do remember, don't you? Oh, right, we were married. Yes, I forgot that part. <laughs> oh, Elliot, you're so amusing. You make me laugh all the time. <laughs> Do you love Sybil? Probably. I married her. <laughs> Your mother and I wanted to know how to spell apothecary. Yeah. A P 
O T H E C A R Y. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Don't scribble, Sybil. <laughs> Excuse me. Did my eyes deceive me, or were you not just kissing my husband a moment ago? We must all speak in very low voices and attempt to be civil. I was speaking in a low voice. Yes. Well, I could still hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I can't hear a bloody word she saying. This woman is an incomplete. Say something, Elliot. I couldn't hear her either. <laughs> I joined the monastery like I almost did after high school. I almost joined, but then I didn't. Oh, Elliot, your malaria is acting up again and you're rambling. Come, come, who do you choose? Me or that baggage over there? You are the baggage, not I. Who do you choose, Elliot? I choose, I'm sorry, what's your name? <laughs> Amanda! I choose Amanda. At least I think that's what he does in the play. <laughs> Very well. I can accept defeat gracefully. You know, I don't think I'll send that letter to your mother. She has a loud voice, an overbearing manner, and I never liked her taste in tea china. I hope, Elliot, that later tonight when you find me hanging from the hotel lobby, lobby chandelier with my eyes pulled down and my tongue sticking out of my mouth that you'll be there. Sybil, she's going to hang herself. Some <laughs> women should be held regularly like tapestries. Oh, who cares? Whose yacht do you think that is? Ah, the, the Duke of Westminster. Oh, how dare you talk about that time in Mozambique! <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you madly. I think I've inhaled some of your cigarette fat. <coughs> <laughs> there! We're not mad at each other anymore! <laughs> Are we? Uh, Elliot, you stay here and I'll go pack my things and we'll run away before Victor gets back. Oh, darling, <clears throat> isn't it extraordinary how potent cheap music can be? <laughs> <laughs> Hail to your lordship. Hello. Are you Victor? The same, my lord. And your poor servant there. This doesn't sound like no Harry. A tron disposition, my good lord. You're not Victor, are you? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. Ah, yes. And how was it? Indeed, my lord. Fall hard upon. Hard upon. Yes, I see. Oh, good to me! Dress, dress, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth for marriage tables. Oh, what is that? Oh, she's gone already. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. Did you? Who? My lord, the king, your father? The king, my father, season your admiration for a moment, and with an attent ear, till I may deliver upon these gentlemen this marvel to you. I see young Hamlet now. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Two nights together had these men, Marcellus and Bernardo. On their watch, been thus encountered. A figure like your father, are met at point exactly. 
cap a peg, appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear-surprised eyes, and within his truncheon's length, whilst they, distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stood dumb and said nothing to him. And indeed, on the third night, I too kept watch. Each word made good and true. The apparition appears. I knew your father. These hands were not more like. Oh, my friend. Most strange and wondrous tale you tell, Horatio. It doth turn my ear into a very merry bear bodkin. <laughs> yes, my lord. We thought it's written our duty to let you know of it. Well, I'll thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, he wore his beaver up. His beaver up? He wore his beaver up. And does he usually wear it down? <laughs> <laughs> a countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. My father was a king of much renown, a favorite amongst all in London town and in Denmark. I warrant it will. I warrant it will also. Our duty to your honor. Wait, where are you going? Oh, don't go. <coughs> Oh, good Amanda, whose yacht do you think that is? Oh, Hamlet, speak to me no more. Thou turnst mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and green spots as will not hold their taint. I haven't seen Victor. Someone was here who I thought might be him, but it wasn't. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers in mine ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. Very well. What do you want to talk about? No more! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just wait a moment and maybe someone will come help. <laughs> of course, sometimes people have soliloquies in Shakespeare. Let's just wait a moment more. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be? That is the question. Obey! Why? Why? Um, thrift, thrift, Horatio. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, but to thine own self be true. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. Ex father now how potent cheap music can be. Um, out, out, them spot! <laughs> I come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. Brush up your Shakespeare. <laughs> Stop talking him now. Oh. I wonder whose yacht is out there. Who was China? Very large, China. Who was Japan? Very small, Japan. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am heartily sorry for I have defended thee, and I detest all my sins because I dread the laws of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of my love, and I resolve to confess my sins to do penance and to amend my life. Amen. That's the um, act of contrition that Catholic school children say in confession in order to be forgiven for their sins. Catholic adults say it too, I imagine. I don't know any Catholic adults. Line? When you call for line, normally the stage manager will give you your next line in order to refresh your memory. Line? The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as gentle rain upon the place below and we have shuffled off this mortal coil. Alas, poor York, I knew him well. Get thee to a nunnery. Line. <laughs> nunnery. As a child, I was taught by nuns, and then in high school by Benedictine priests. I really rather liked the nuns. They were sort of warm, though fairly crazy, too. 
line? I like the priests also. The school's on the grounds of a monastery, and during my junior and senior years, I spent a few weekends joining in the daily routines of the monastery. Prayers, then <coughs> breakfast, then prayers, then lunch, then prayers, then dinner, then prayers, then sleep. I found the predictability quite attractive, <laughs> and the food was good. I was going to join the monastery right after high school, but instead I was too young and should wait. So I never did join the monastery. I became an accountant. I've studied logarithms and cosine and tan. Line! <laughs> I'm sorry. This is supposed to be Shakespeare, or this is supposed to be Hamlet or Private Lives or something, and I just keep rattling on like a maniac. I really do apologize. It's just I don't recall attending a single rehearsal. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what I was doing. And also, you came expecting to see Edwin Booth when you get me. I really do apologize. Sorry. Line! I have always depended on the kindness of strangers. Stop! <laughs> it is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. It is a far better place I go than I have ever been before. A, B, G, <laughs> H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, Oh, good, are you Ophelia? Give me each other to read. Okay. This must be one of those modern tablets. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing to be done. Pause, pause. Nothing to be done. You're not Ophelia, are you? We'll just wait. Pause. Either he'll come, pause, pause, or he won't. Well, that's a reasonable attitude. Are we on a guess waiting for Godot? No, Willie, we're not. He already came. Yesterday he came, garlic on his breath, telling a lot of unpleasant jokes about Jews and Pollocks and stewardesses. Ugh! He was just dreadful. Pause, rolls eyes upward. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So who are we waiting for? We're waiting for Lefty. Ah, and he's some sort of political organizer or something, as I seem to recall. Oh, yes, dear. He's a political organizer, all right. He's always coming around here saying stuff like, Get off your behinds! Fight the system! Do this! Do that! Ah! He's the worst! He's worse than Jane Fonda, and he's got garlic breath just like Godot. Honestly, I don't know which one of them is worse, and I hope neither of them ever comes here ever again. Pause, blinks left eye, blinks right eye, closes them both, opens them. So we're uh, not really looking for anyone, are we? No, dear, we're not. It's just another happy day! Do you smell something? That's not your line. Willie doesn't have that many lines. Oh, Willie, how talkative you are this morning! <laughs> There seems to be some sort of muck at the bottom of this garbage can. <laughs> Mustn't complain, Willie. There's muck at the bottom of everyone's garbage can. Count your blessings, Willie. I do. One, two, three. Are you counting, Willie? I guess so. I'm at three. Three's my eyesight. <laughs> oh my god. I've gone blind. Oh, wow. Oh, Willie. What a terrible day! I can't see a thing! Oh well, no matter. I never even, really even needed my eyes for anything anyway, unless I occasionally wanted to see something. But no more! I really don't know this play at all. <laughs> count your blessings, Willie. Let me hear you count them! All right. One, two, three. That's my eyesight. Four, that's my hearing. Five, that's my master charm. Six, that's... Did I hear you say God, Willie? No. Why did you leave the monastery, Willie? Was it for the same reason I left the opera? I don't know. I left the opera because I couldn't sing. <laughs> they were mad to have hired me, certifiable. And they were certified shortly thereafter, the entire staff. 
<sighs> they now reside at the Rigoletto Home for the Mentally Incapacitated <laughs> in Turin. Pause. Tries to touch her nose with her tongue. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Did you hear that, Willie? It's a voice. Maybe there is a god. At this evening's performance, the role of Sir Thomas More, the man for all seasons, normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Selden. The role of Lady Alice, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Siddon. The role of Lady Margaret, normally played by Eleanor Duke, will be read by the stage manager. And at this evening's performance, the executioner will play himself. What did he say? The executioner will play himself. <laughs> what does he mean, the executioner will play himself? Oh, Father, why have you locked up in this dreadful dungeon? It's more than I can bear. I brought you a lobster, Thomas. Mommy's brought you a lobster, Father. Yes, thank you. No, Father, if you don't give in to the king, they're going to cut your head off. Aren't you going to eat the lobster I brought you, Thomas? Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where the executioner is. Oh my god. I have to get out of here. He's over here, and he'll never give it to the king. Uh, no, no, I might. Quick, is this all about Anne Boleyn and everything? Yes, and you won't give in because you believe in the Catholic Church and the infallibility of the Pope and the everlasting life of the soul. I don't necessarily believe in any of that. <laughs> oh, sir, there's been an error. I think it's fine if the king marries Anne Boleyn. I just want to wake up. Oh, don't deny God, Father, just to spare our feelings. Mother and I will have you dead as a question of principle. The first lobster wasn't that good, but this is the second one, though he's kind of hairy. Shut up about your lobster, would you? <laughs> Look, I don't think the Pope is infallible at all. I think he's a normal man with normal capabilities. He wears gold slippers. I was going to join the monastery when I was younger, but I didn't do it. Oh, Willie, I was just having the most wonderful dream. Oh, go ahead, let him cut your head off, Willie. It'll be a nice change of pace. <laughs> that blade looks very real to me. Quick, I want to wake up now or change place. I wonder whose yacht is out there. <laughs> no, thank you. A horse? A horse? <laughs> My kingdom for a horse? Sir Thomas More, you have been convicted of the crime of high treason and shall be taken to the Tower of London, thence to the place of execution, or your head will be stricken from your body and may God have mercy on your soul. Oh, this fuck about God. Look, I'm sorry I didn't join the monastery. Maybe I should have. And I'm sorry I giggled during mass in third grade, but I see no reason to be killed for it. Ah, nothing to be done. That's what I find so wonderful. Wait, no! Do I understand you right? And you wish to reverse your previous claim on the king's marriage to Anne? Yes, yes, God, yes. I could care less than a merry eight that is a terrible legacy of a coward to leave behind. I don't care. Well, I'm going to ignore what you said and cut your head off anyway. <laughs> the church needs its saints, and our kids need their heroes. Don't you all agree? I know I always need someone to look up to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I can feel myself waking up now. The covers have fallen off my bed, and I am cold. I'm going to wake up so I can reach down and pull them back up again. Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. Be quiet. I'm about to wake up. <laughs> Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. I'm awake. <laughs> Lobster? <laughs> no. no, I'm not. Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. I don't know my line. Line? and say, friend, be not afraid of your office, you send me to God. Oh, I don't like that line. Give me another. That's a line in the script, George. Say it. I don't want to. Say the line, George. Go ahead, say it, Willie. It'll mean a lot to me and generations of school children to come. Pause. Picks knit from head. Oh, Hamlet, 
Speak the speech, <laughs> trippingly on the tongue. Say it! <laughs> Friend, be not afraid of your office. You send me the extraordinary how potent she music can be. That's not the line. Well, women should be struck regularly like dogs. George, say the line right. <laughs> I guess they say you can never dream your own death. So I expect I'll wake up just as soon as he starts to bring the blade down. So maybe I should get this over with. Say the proper line, George. Friend, be not afraid of your office. Goodbye, Hamlet. Goodbye, Willie. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Sir Thomas More. He sends me unto God. Behold, the head of Sir Thomas More. Oh, I wish I weren't blind and I could have seen that, Willie. <laughs> oh, well, no matter. It's just another happy day. Pause, pause, pause. Wrinkles nose, pause, smiles, pause, pick snip from head, pause, pause, all in darkness, utterly useless, no one can see her. She stares ahead, count to, end of play. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show.